Number 38. Carbon tetrachloride, which is CCL4, was once used as a dry cleaning solvent, but is no longer used because it is carcinogenic. At 57.8 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of CCL4 is 54.0 kilopascals, and its enthalpy of vaporization is 33.05 kilojoules per mole. Use this information to estimate the normal boiling point for carbon tetrachloride, which is CCL4. Okay, so we got a, a few numbers going on here. Let's just list them out for now. Now, they tell us that at this specific temperature, we have a vapor pressure. Now, vapor just means that we're turning it into a gas, but we have a pressure nonetheless of 54.0 uh, kilopascals. So this temperature and this pressure go together. So I'm just going to write that down. So I have a temperature and a pressure. And let's see, so my temperature here is 57. 0.8 degrees Celsius, and the corresponding pressure is 54.0 kilopascals. Okay, now they do tell me that I have an enthalpy of vaporization. Now, enthalpy is a delta H value. So I have a delta H value, I have a heat value for vaporization, so I could call this vape or vap or whatever. So we have this value, so I'll just list that out. Delta H of vaporization is 33.05 kilojoules per mole. Normal standard units for a enthalpy value. And now we just have to use this information to estimate the normal boiling point for tar carbon tetrachloride. Now a boiling point is just a fancy way for saying a certain temperature at which carbon tetrachloride is going to turn from a liquid to a gas. So this is the question. We have to estimate the normal boiling point. Okay, so I'm looking for another temperature. And this is what I'm solving for, T equals X. Now the question here is that I have two temperatures. Did they tell us the vapor pressure at the... Um, boiling point. No, right? But I know that there's going to have to be some corresponding pressure with that. Maybe I'll list this as red. And now I have two sets. I have a T1 and a P1 that are going together. And then I have a T2 and a P2. Just to designate, you know, what set goes with what. Okay. So now here it comes. We, we're definitely dealing with math here, so we know that we have to use a formula. Now, especially when you have enthalpy values and you have two sets of temperatures and pressures, you're using the clausius clapeyron equation. You don't really need to know the name of the actual equation. You just need to know what the formula is. And the formula is this. Pretty cool formula. And it's natural log, which is ln, of the two pressures... P2 divided by P1 equals your enthalpy of vaporization divided by R times 1 minus T1 minus 1 minus a 1 divided by T2. So 1 divided by T1 minus 1 divided by T2. Now, we have majority of this, right? We know that the delta H of vaporization is going to be the 33.05 so we can start just seeing stuff in there. Kilojoules per mole. Now the R value, there's two R values in chemistry, right? There's the 8.314 and then there's the 0 0.08206. If we're dealing with energy here, which is what we are dealing with, we're in joules, we have to use the 8.314 and that's in joules per mole times Kelvin. But now here comes our first problem. The delta H value was in kilojoules. My R value, one of the units is in joules. So it doesn't matter which one you convert. I just like to convert the delta H into joules. So I will do that. And in order to do that, 
kilojoule to joule, all you got to do is just times by a thousand. Similarly, just take the decimal and move it over to the right three times. So this would now be three three zero five zero thirty three thousand and fifty joules per mole, and that's the delta H that I'm going to use. So now here comes the two temperatures. We have T1, which was 57.8, and the other one which we're solving for. I'm just going to put an X over here. However, remember, with these formulas, chances are that your temperature has to be in Kelvin, and this one is no different. So you will have to take, and maybe I'll just move this over a little bit, you will have to take that 57.8 and plus 273, 0.15 to get it into the Kelvin. So let's go for it. 57.8 plus 273.15. I mean, you could just add plus 273, but I just like to be as accurate as possible. And we get 330.95, and that's Kelvin. That's the number that's going in here. 330.95 Kelvin. Okay, so now we need to know our two pressures. We know the P1, so we already know that this is 54.0 kilopascals, but they didn't give me the other pressure. Well, the key here was that they said that we wanted to find the normal boiling point. And remember, if you're trying to find a normal boiling point, this is the temperature at atmospheric pressure. So, there is your answer. Under standard conditions, your atmospheric pressure is going to be 1 atm. So technically, this P2 should be 1 atm. However, in this case, for your pressures, it doesn't matter whether you use atm or bar or tor or millimeters of mercury or kilopascals. You just have to have the same unit. So just know that 1 atm is the same as 101.3 kilopascals. And this is the number, and maybe I'll write that in red, but that's the number that I'm going to throw in. So they're equivalent to each other. And that's the number that's going in here. All right, so let's get on with it. Ln of, let's just set this up. So we have that, this is going to equal something times one over minus one. Okay, so let's see if we could plug it in. We have our P1 and T1. P1 goes down here, so 54.0, and we have the 330.95 going down over here. Let's fill in our reds now. We have P2 and T2, 101.3 goes up on the top, and an X value goes over here. And now we're just going to fill in our delta H in joules, so 33,050, and then our R value, which was 8.314. And now we're ready to do the math. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we could do to kind of simplify this. The first thing that I would do is I would just get this into being one number. So that's one thing that I'm going to do on the calculator. And then I'm also going to just uh, simplify this component right here. And maybe, I think I have a little bit of room. Let's just move this up. And now let's go to the calculator and plug these in. So ln of 101.3 divided by 54. We could close the parentheses if we want to. And I get, a, I get a long decimal, which I am going to, um, which I am going to not round when I do my calculations, but I will just kind of like, you know, bring it out a little bit. 629102 equals, let's now do this division. So 33050. Whoop, hold on, 33050 divided by 8.314. Let's press enter. Another 
long decimal. So let's just put some numbers in here. Two, two, we'll say two, two, three. And now this is being all multiplied by whoop, this value, right? There's ones on the top. We have three, three, zero point nine five, and then we have X. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to distribute. So maybe I'll just say that this was this, right? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to distribute. We're going to take this value and we're going to distribute it. Maybe I'll do it in a different color. We've got to distribute it to this blue fraction and then we have to distribute it to the red fraction. And I'm just going to write it up here because the, the thing is getting a little bit smaller. So just do that. So now we have... 0 0.629102 equals, so now I'm going to take my number that I'm not going to round, and I'm going to press enter, I'm going to bring it down, and then I'm just going to say this is times by 1 divided by 330.95. And 330.95, everything looks good here. Okay, so that's the first one. So we have 12 point Another long decimal, so I will not round in my calculations. And then keep in mind, this is minus, so this is now minus. And this times 1 over x is just going to be that number, 3975.223 over x. Okay, we're getting closer. So now we need to get x by itself this number needs to go on over here. So I'm just going to subtract by 12 on both sides, the 12.01155. This goes bye-bye. And now this side is still negative, 3975.223 all over the x value. And now let's see, 0.6. Uh, so actually, I can get rid of this, and I can just pull this number all the way from up here, press enter, that's why I love the TI-84, and I'm going to subtract this 12 value. Beautiful. We get something relatively close to negative 11.3824. We can now cross multiply. We're back to like basic algebra here. So we have negative 11.3824, and that's being multiplied by x. And this is all equal to negative 3975.223. We're at the end stages here. We know what to do. We're going to divide by that negative 11.3824 on both sides. 3824. This lovely will cancel out. We have x as the total on this side. And I think I got it. I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. Beautiful. And now we have X equals. And negative divided by negative is a positive. So when I come over here, I'm just going to grab this 3975 value and I'm gonna divide it by the 11 value. Now, if you want to just times it by a negative one, just to not see the negative in there, there you go. So we got 349, and I think we're good, 349, and that's in Kelvin. So that's the boiling point. Now, if you wanted it in Celsius, right? So maybe I'll just put it up here. We'll say 349 Kelvin, which is equal to, all we have to do is just take this value and subtract by 273.15. And voila, you are in Celsius. So 76.1 76, 76 degrees Celsius. And these two answers, whichever one you want, this is your 
boiling point. Then we'll say boiling point. And voila, that is the final answer. Um, yeah, I, I hope this helps you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep working hard. And I will talk to you in later lessons. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.